The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Best friends. Thomas and Percy are best friends. They tell each other everything. They even have a best friend's whistle. It was a busy day at the quarry. Thomas and Percy were working together. Together, Thomas and Percy happily tooted their best friend's whistle. My favorite days are when we work together. Then Neville arrived to collect some trucks. He was excited. The brass band has arrived at Brendam Docks. Hooray! I like the brass band. So do I, but I'm never asked to pull them. If you go to the washdown now, you'll soon be as shiny as a trumpet. Then maybe the fat controller will ask you to collect them. Percy was excited. Thank you, Thomas. The two engines tooted their best friend's whistle and Percy puffed happily away. Later, the fat controller had arrived. He was in a hurry. Thomas, you are to pick up the brass band from the docks and don't forget to have a wash down. Thomas was worried. He knew Percy wanted to pick up the brass band but he didn't know how to tell Percy that the Fat Controller had asked him to do it. Then Thomas saw Percy puffing back to the quarry. Look at me, Thomas. I'm as shiny as a trumpet. Thomas didn't know what to say. He didn't want to upset his best friend. The Fat Controller's sure to choose me now. This made Thomas feel even worse. He puffed quickly away. Where are you going, Thomas? I have another job. Percy tooted his best friend's whistle, but Thomas couldn't toot back. Thomas was enjoying his washdown. Then he saw Percy in the distance. Thomas still didn't know how to tell Percy about the special, so he hid. Percy puffed past. He didn't see Thomas. Thomas was relieved. He chuffed out of the shed. He raced away to collect Annie and Clarabelle. Then Thomas saw Percy again. I still don't know how to tell Percy about the brass band, thought Thomas. So he took a different track to the docks. Thomas knew it would take him longer. I must hurry. I don't want to be late, he thought to himself. Later, Thomas was steaming along. Cinders and ashes. There's Percy again. He was sure Percy was going to see him this time, so Thomas hid behind Duck. Percy puffed past. He didn't see Thomas hiding behind Duck's long line of trucks. Thank you, Duck. Duck looked puzzled. Thomas steamed onto the docks as fast as his pistons would pump. Thomas was late for the brass band. They were waiting on the dockside. All aboard. Then he saw some mail trucks. He knew Percy would soon come to collect them. Hurry up! The band hurried. But the trumpet player had left his trumpet behind, right at the end of the dockside. 
So Thomas had to wait. Just then, Percy arrived. Hello, Thomas. Percy saw that Thomas was collecting the brass band. He was very upset. Why didn't you tell me, Thomas? I tell you everything. Thomas felt terrible. He tooted his best friend's whistle, but Percy didn't whistle back. Thomas felt worse than ever. He puffed out of the docks with the brass band. Thomas arrived at Great Waterton. The Fat Controller was waiting to welcome the brass band. Thomas still felt very unhappy. He had let his best friend down. Thomas, you must come back at the end of the concert to pick up the brass band. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Sir, can Percy pick up the band? Percy is delivering the mail. If I pull Percy's mail trucks, then could he pick up the band? The Fat Controller agreed. So Annie and Clarabelle were uncoupled and Thomas steamed off to find his best friend. Now Thomas really wanted to find Percy, but Percy was nowhere to be found. Thomas was worried. The concert would finish soon and the band would be waiting. Then Thomas saw Percy. He was waiting at a signal. I'm sorry I didn't tell you I was picking up the band. I'm busy. I have to pull the mail. I've something to tell you. I'll pull the mail for you. Then you can go and pick up the brass band and take them to the docks. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Thank you, Thomas. He was very excited. Thomas buffered up to Percy's mail trucks and quickly pulled away. He was pleased to help his best friend. Percy steamed off to pick up Annie and Clarabelle. He couldn't wait to collect the brass band. Later, Thomas puffed in to Great Waterton. Percy was waiting for the band. You are my best friend, Percy. From now on, I will always tell you everything and they tooted their best friend's whistle for everyone to hear. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Push me, pull you. One bright spring morning at the coal yard, the yard manager was talking to Scar Lowy. A puppet show is coming. The children will be excited. No one in the hills has ever seen a puppet show. Scar Lowy wanted to pull the puppet show special, so he raced away. Scar Lowy puffed into the transfer yard. Thomas and the Thin Controller were already there. Please, sir, may I pull the puppet show special? That's a fine idea, Scarlowy. Scarlowy's boiler bubbled with excitement. Watch out! They're heavy! Scarlowy buffered up. Slowly, Scarlowy puffed away. The trucks were heavy. But Scar Lowy was happy. 
The Puppet Show special was his. Scarlowy heaved and hauled up the steep hill. At last, he reached the top. Reneus was there. He was very excited to see the puppet show special. Those trucks look heavy. I could help you. But Scar Lowy didn't want to share his special with Reneus. No, thank you. I can pull these trucks on my own. <laughs> I'm stronger than you. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Then an idea flew into Scar Lowy's funnel. We'll put the trucks between us and pull our hardest. The strongest engine will pull the puppet show special. Reneus was soon coupled up to the back of the train. They pulled with all their strength and steam. First, the trucks trundled one way, then they trundled the other. Scar Lowy was determined to win. Then Reneus heard a creaking and a cranking. He knew the couplings were being pulled too hard. But Scar Lowy wouldn't give up. I must win, he thought. Then there was trouble. With a crack and a clank, Reneus's coupling snapped. The puppet show trucks bashed and bumped into Scar Lowy and pushed him down the other side of the hill. Scar Lowy was scared. He tried to apply his brakes, but they wouldn't work. Scar Lowy flew faster and faster down the steep hill. Scar Lowy saw Duncan. He was pushing trucks and bunting onto the main track. Look out, Duncan! Stop! But it was too late. Scar Lowy crashed into Duncan's trucks. Bunting flew into the air. It fell all over Scar Lowy. Duncan was cross. Oh, sorry, Duncan, but I must get the puppet show to the children. Scar Lowy raced on. The puppet show special clattered and chattered. Then Scar Lowy saw Rusty at a junction ahead. Rusty was pulling trucks of special ice cream. Out of my way! I can't stop! Rusty stopped right across the tracks. Scar Lowy bashed into Rusty's trucks. Ice cream flew into the air and splattered all over the engines. Rusty was cross. Now there would be no ice cream at the puppet show. Sorry, Rusty, but I must get the puppet show to the children. So Scar Lowy clattered on. Scar Lowy was puffing towards Percival Pond. Then there was trouble. Scar Lowy went round the bend too fast. He steamed into a siding. Scar Lowy bashed through the buffers. With a splash, a sploosh and a splosh, Scar Lowy plunged into Percival Pond. Fizzling fireboxes. I wanted to pull the puppet show special on my own. Now look what I've done. The children won't have ice cream or flags, and they won't have their puppet show. Help! But there was no one there to hear. Then Scar Lowy heard a whistle he knew. That's Reneus, he thought. Reneus puffed to the edge of the pond. Scar Lowy had never been happier to see his friend. I puffed as quickly as I could. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought you might need my help. I, uh, I do. I wanted to show you that I was the strongest, but all I have shown you is that I am the silliest. But Reneus was happy to help. Slowly Reneus heaved and hauled his friend out of the pond. At last, Scar Lowy was back on the rails, but his firebox was out and his coal was wet. Reneus, you must take the puppet show to the children. I have other jobs to do. <gasps> Thank you, Skull Lowy. And Reneus puffed proudly away with the puppet show special. 
Scar Lowy had a lot to do. He delivered new trucks of ice cream to Rusty. Then Scar Lowy found Duncan. Duncan's trucks were now filled with the bunting. I'm going to be late for the puppet show. Don't worry, Duncan. I'll help you. We'll steam to the showground in no time. Duncan and Scar Lowy arrived just in time. The children were gathered round the puppet show. Welcome everyone to the first puppet show in the hills. The children cheered. Scar Lowy puffed up to Reneus. You're my best friend, Reneus, and there's nothing stronger than friendship. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Percy and the Bandstand. It was summertime on the island of Sodor. The Fat Controller was in Great Waterton with Miss Jenny, Jack and Alfie. They were building a new bandstand. There was to be an open air concert that evening. It was a special surprise for Lady Hat. She loved brass band. All the engines were busy helping to make the day special. Edward was bringing special parcels. Thomas was bringing the banners and bunting. And Percy was bringing gravel for the pathways. Thank you, Percy. Right on time. Percy tried to shunt the trucks into place, but the trucks decided to be troublesome. <laughs> Hold back! Hold back! Percy pushed and pushed, but the trucks wouldn't move. Percy knew what he had to do. He had to use his do-as-I-say whistle. So Percy blew his whistle long and loudly. The trucks knew that when Percy blew his do-as-I-say whistle, they had to do what he wanted. It meant Percy was in charge. Soon, all the trucks were in line. The fat controller bustled over to Percy. I hope I didn't blow my whistle too loudly. Not at all, Percy. You showed you were in charge. Percy was relieved. Now, I need you to collect Lady Hat and bring her to the surprise concert. You must be here by tea time, understand? Yes, sir. You mustn't tell her where she's going, or it will spoil the surprise. Don't worry, sir, I won't. Percy had collected the carriage. He had to meet Lady Hat at Maithwaite Station. It was a long way from Great Waterton. At last, Percy puffed into Maithwaite Station. All aboard! Sir Topham Hart has sent me to take you on a special trip. Oh, that sounds lovely. First of all, I'd like to go to the duck pond. And Lady Hat climbed on board. Percy was worried. He was supposed to take Lady Hat to the bandstand. That was her special trip. Percy knew there wasn't time to go to the duck pond, but he didn't dare tell Lady Hat. 
he thought she might be cross. So he puffed to the duck pond. Lady Hat stood by the duck pond. She liked watching the ducks. They quacked and quacked. But Percy wanted them to be on their way. At last, Lady Hat was back on board. Next, I'd like to go to the windmill. Percy was very worried. He knew there wasn't time to go to the windmill, but he didn't feel brave enough to tell Lady Hat. So Percy puffed away. When they arrived at the windmill, Dusty Miller was there. Lady Hat was pleased. Hello, Dusty. How are you? We're going to be really late now, Percy huffed to himself. At last, Lady Hat finished talking to Dusty. Now, Percy, I'd like to see the bluebells in the woods. It would be the perfect end to my special trip. Percy was more worried than ever. Percy puffed to the woods, but with every puff he was getting later and later, and further and further from Lady Hat's surprise. Percy and Lady Hat arrived at the wood. Lady Hat wandered off to admire the bluebells. Percy waited and waited. Suddenly, Thomas puffed up to Percy. Where have you been, Percy? The Fat Controller is cross. He doesn't want Lady Hat to be late. Percy didn't want the Fat Controller to be cross. He didn't want the surprise to be spoiled. Don't worry, I'll have her there on time. So Thomas puffed away. Percy couldn't see Lady Hat anywhere. Percy knew what he had to do. He had to use his do-as-I-say whistle. Percy blew his whistle long and loudly. Lady Hat came out of the woods. Percy, what do you want? I'm taking you to a surprise. That's your special trip. Oh, I love surprises. Why didn't you tell me? Because I thought you'd be cross with me if I told you what to do. And now we might be late. We must hurry. So Lady Hat climbed quickly on board and Percy raced away. Percy steamed back to Great Waterton as fast as he could. The band was warming up. Jack and Alfie were very excited. Percy had arrived with Lady Hat on time. The band started to play. Lady Hat was delighted. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Thank you for bringing me here on time, Percy. And thank you, Percy, for keeping it a surprise. Percy was pleased. His do-as-I-say whistle had saved the day. It had been really useful. And so the island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green, and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Thomas puts the brakes on. It was a busy time on the island of Sodor. The Sodor River Bridge was being rebuilt. Thomas had been chosen to help the builders. He was very busy 
and very proud. Thomas was at the yards. He was excited. This is the last delivery. Then the bridge will be finished. Thomas, you must be careful with these blocks. They were made especially for the bridge. There are no more like them anywhere. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed carefully out of the yard. Thomas had to stop at a signal, but when he applied his brakes, he heard a squeaking sound. Thomas was worried. Stanley was there. He was taking builders to the bridge. Hello, Thomas. Your brakes don't sound good. Shall I take your load for you? No, thank you. I don't need any help. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Next, Thomas saw Emily. Slow down, Thomas. There's a sharp bend ahead. Thomas applied his brakes. The squeak was much louder, and his brakes wouldn't work properly. He raced round the bend much too fast. Thomas's wheels hit a bump in the track. Some of the special blocks bounced off his flatbed. But Thomas didn't know. He was worried about his squeaking brakes. I know, he thought. I'll puff more slowly. Thomas arrived at the top of a steep hill. As he went downhill, Thomas started to roll faster. Thomas applied his brakes, but they still weren't working properly, and the squeak was even louder. Gordon was puffing up the hill. Slow down, Thomas. But Thomas couldn't slow down. He raced into an emergency siding and he hit the buffers with a big bump. More of the special blocks bounced off his flatbed down a steep bank. Now there was only one stack left. But Thomas still didn't notice. He was still worried about his squeaking brakes. Thomas set off once more very slowly for the bridge. Finally, Thomas saw the Sodor River Bridge ahead. The builders were waiting. Hooray, I've made it. Here I come with the last special delivery. Thomas knew he had to slow down now, but he couldn't. Thomas's brakes had stopped working altogether. Fizzling fireboxes, what can I do? With a clang and a crash, Thomas clanked off the rails. His flatbed bashed his buffers with a bump. The last of the special blocks fell from his flatbed into the water. Cinders and ashes, I've lost some of the special blocks. No, Thomas, you've lost them all. Now the bridge can't be finished. Oh no. This is a disaster. The workmen attached chains to Stanley and Thomas. Slowly, Stanley pulled Thomas back to safety. Thomas was upset. How did I lose the blocks? He huffed to himself. Thomas remembered the bump on the bridge. It had made the last blocks fall from his flatbed. Maybe the other blocks fell when I hit the other bumps, he thought. Thomas remembered where he had hit the buffers. Then he remembered going over the very bumpy track. Thomas knew what he had to do. Stanley, will you help me, please? Of course, Thomas. If you shunt me back along the track to the yard, I can show you where the other special blocks fell off. That's a very good idea. We must take Rocky with us. He can load the blocks onto your flatbed. Then you can bring them back to finish the bridge. Soon Stanley was chuffing along. He shunted Thomas behind him. And Murdoch shunted Rocky. 
they reach the bottom of the steep hill. This is where I bash the buffers with a bump. Hooray! There they are! Soon, Rocky had lifted the blocks onto Stanley's flatbed, and they all puffed on. Thomas and Stanley found the rest of the special blocks at the sharp bend, and Rocky set to work. Soon, Stanley shunted Thomas back into the yard, and he set off proudly with the special blocks. Good luck, Stanley. I was silly not to have asked for your help. Thank you. A worker looked at Thomas's wheels. I've come to have my brakes fixed. They make a terrible squeak. Later that day, Thomas chuffed back to the Sodor River Bridge. Thomas put his brakes on. There was no squeak at all. He stopped right beside Stanley. My brakes are fixed now. So is the Sodor River Bridge. All thanks to my friend, Stanley. Blue Sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. The man in the hills. Thomas puffs proudly all over the island of Sodor. He is especially happy to visit his friends on the narrow gauge railway. There is always something special to do or to see in the high hills. One day, Thomas puffed into the wharf. Lots of his friends were there. Hello! It was the thin controller's birthday. The little engines had a lot to do before they could go to his party. Thomas was excited. I brought a present from the fat controller. It's a special tent to have the birthday party in. We have special presents too. I'm taking decorations. And I'm taking flowers. We're taking banners and balloons. They were all very excited. I'm going to tell him a man in the hill story. They are his favorites. Thomas had never heard of the man in the hills. He was a very tall man, dressed all in white, and he lived high in the hills. No one has ever found him. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Maybe I can find him and bring him to Mr. Percival's party. That would be the most special present of all. I can help you. I know the hills better than anyone. No, thank you. I'm sure I can find him on my own. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Please don't leave for the party without me. And he chuffed quickly away. Thomas raced through the hills. The man in the hills, the man in the hills, I know that I'll find him, I'm sure that I will. He chuffed to himself. Thomas puffed up to a hillside halt. There was a man dressed all in white. It's the man in the hills, he thought excitedly to himself. Please come with me to see Mr. Percival. Yes, Thomas. Right away. So the man climbed on board. Thomas puffed proudly into the wharf. I found the man in the hills. The man stepped from the cab. 
I'm not the man in the hills. I'm the dairy man. Thomas was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes. Scarloe and Reneus <laughs> giggled. We can help you find the man in the hills. No, thank you. And Thomas steamed quickly away. Thomas searched high and low. The man in the hills, the man in the hills. I know that I'll find them. I'm sure that I will, he huffed to himself. Thomas chuffed towards the mill. A man was waiting nearby. He was white from head to foot. This must be the man in the hills, thought Thomas. Please come with me to see Mr Percival. Right away, Thomas. So the man climbed on board. Thomas puffed into the wharf. I found a man in the hills. The man stepped down. I'm not the man in the hills. I'm the miller. Thomas could see the miller was no longer white. All the flour had blown off him. Thomas was upset. The miller was worried. I still have to make the birthday cake for the party. And I have to make the ice cream. The little engines were cross. You said you'd bring the best present of all. Now Mr Percival doesn't have any presents and we're all late. Thomas felt terrible. I wanted to find the most special present all on my own, but all I've done is spoil the party for everyone, especially for Mr Percival. So Thomas asked Scarloe and Reneus to take the party tent. Please, hurry. The dairyman and the miller boarded Thomas, and Thomas raced quickly away. Thomas was determined to put everything right. Thomas delivered the dairyman to the dairy to make the ice cream and delivered the miller to the mill. At last the cake was baked and Thomas chuffed quickly away with it. Thomas met Freddy at a junction. Freddy was on his way to the party. I have to get the birthday cake to the party as quickly as I can. Please help me find a shortcut. Freddy was happy to help. Come on now, follow me. And together they puffed quickly away. Thomas and Freddy stopped at the Green Hills Junction. Suddenly, Thomas gasped. <gasps> Bust my boiler! Look! There, all in white, was a man. He was carved into the hillside. He shone in the moonlight. It's a man in the hills. Thomas, you found him. Suddenly, Thomas had an idea. Freddy, please bring Mr Percival here with all the engines. And Freddy raced away. Soon, all the engines were gathered by the man in the hills. The engines gasped and everyone was delighted. There, far away and high up in the high hills, Sir Handel was ready to tell his story. And Mr Percival had the best birthday present ever. From all of the engines. Gordon takes a shortcut. Gordon is a very proud engine. He likes to do important jobs. Gordon thinks he knows the Sodor Railway better than anyone. Gordon was at Knapford Station waiting for Stanley. Stanley was late. Gordon had to take Stanley's passengers on to Brendam Docks. At last, Stanley puffed in. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I took a shortcut, but I got lost. I never get lost. I know the railway better than any other engine. 
Some very important passengers and a group of workmen are waiting at Great Waterton. The first engine to arrive will pick up the very important passengers. The second will collect the workmen. Gordon didn't want to pick up the workmen. He wanted to pick up the very important passengers. I've got to get coal and water. See you at Great Waterton, Gordon. And Stanley chuffed cheerily away. Gordon was determined to arrive at Great Waterton first, so he raced off to Brendam Docks. Gordon delivered Stanley's passengers and puffed away to Great Waterton as quickly as his boiler could bubble. Gordon puffed up to a junction. He could see Stanley ahead. Gordon was worried. Then he had an idea. If I take a shortcut, he huffed to himself, I will arrive at Great Waterton before Stanley and I won't get lost. So Gordon took the other track. Gordon steamed happily along his shortcut. He stopped at the signal. Duck was having a washdown. Doc was surprised to see Gordon so far from the express track. Uh, are you lost? Would you like some help? No, thank you. I'm not lost. And Gordon chuffed away. Gordon steamed further along his shortcut. I should be at Great Waterton by now, he thought. Gordon puffed around a bend. Ahead, there was a bridge. Hooray! That must be the Great Waterton Bridge. But under the bridge, it wasn't Great Waterton. It was a repair yard. Gordon saw Oliver and Toad. They were having their wheels oiled. They were surprised to see Gordon so far from the express track. Are you lost? Would you like some help? No, thank you, I'm not lost. And Gordon chuffed quickly away. Gordon steamed along. Now he was more worried. His shortcut was taking longer and longer. Then he saw another bridge. Hooray! Here's the Great Waterton Bridge. But under the bridge, it wasn't Great Waterton. It was the shunting yard of a logging station. Gordon had never been here before. Then in the distance, he heard Stanley's whistle from the track below. Stanley is catching up, he huffed to himself. I must race ahead. Gordon pumped his pistons. Then there was trouble. Ben was shunting a flatbed of logs. Gordon biffed straight into them. The logs started to roll down the hill. Bust my buffers, those logs will block the lower track. I must stop Stanley. But Gordon didn't know which track to take. Gordon was lost. What have you done? Gordon knew his shortcut hadn't worked. Now he needed to ask for help. Can you help me, Ben? I have to get to the lower track as fast as possible. Of course. Ben was happy to help. Soon the track was clear and Gordon steamed away. He had to warn Stanley. Then Gordon arrived at a fork in the track. He didn't know which way to go next. Gordon saw Oliver and Toad puffing toward him. Please stop! I'm lost. I need to get to the lower track as quickly as possible. Oliver was happy to help. Take the left track. And Gordon raced on. Gordon arrived at another fork in the track. He didn't know which way to go. Then he saw Duck chuffing over a bridge. Please stop. I'm lost and I'm in a hurry. Duck was happy to help. You must take the track on the right. Thank you. And Gordon steamed off. Mm -hmm. 
At last, Gordon puffed on to the lower track. He could see the logs had fallen across Stanley's line. Then he saw Stanley chuffing round the bend. Gordon blew his whistle long and loud. Stop, Stanley! Stop! Stanley applied his brakes and screeched to a halt just in front of the logs. Soon Rocky arrived. He cleared the logs in no time. I'm sorry, Stanley. This was all my fault. I wanted to take a shortcut. I wanted to pick up the very important passengers. But now I want you to collect them. Stanley was delighted. Later, the very important passengers were all on board Stanley's carriages. Stanley felt very proud. Gordon puffed in to collect the workmen. I won't be taking any shortcuts this time. Stanley laughed, and Gordon smiled at his new friend. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Don't go back. Thomas is a busy engine. He is very good at shunting. Thomas thinks he can shunt backwards and forwards faster than any other engine. One day, Thomas and Diesel were waiting at the quarry. The quarry manager arrived. Thomas, I have a very important job for you. You must fill lots of trucks with stone. Henry will arrive soon to collect them. Yes, sir. I have an important job too. I'm sure I'll fill my trucks first. No, you won't. I can be so steamy any day. I'll race you to the hopper. Thomas was sure he could win the race and do his job. But Diesel wanted the race to be tricky. He had a devious idea. We have to go backwards. All right, I'll win. So the two engines raced away, backwards. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, Thomas huffed to himself. Thomas was determined to win. Thomas and Diesel took separate tracks to the hopper. I'm sure to win now, Thomas thought to himself. Thomas steamed towards the hopper. I'm first, but Thomas couldn't see that Diesel had arrived first behind him. Thomas bashed into Diesel. Stone poured down from the hopper. Thomas was covered from funnel to footplate in dust. Ha-ha, <laughs> silly, slow, steamy, I won the race. Thomas wanted to beat Diesel. We'll have another race to the washdown, and this time I'll win. Well, we still have to race backwards. So together, the two engines whooshed away. Thomas and Diesel race buffer to buffer. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, huffed Thomas to himself. Mavis was at the washdown. She was enjoying a soapy soak, but Thomas couldn't see Mavis. He raced backwards into the washdown and biffed into Mavis, who came off the rails. Ooh, rattling rods, ooh! Then Diesel rolled in. I won. Thomas forgot about Mavis. Thomas was enjoying being the winner. Yeah, well, we both won a race. We must have one more. Thomas was no longer thinking about his job. All right, let's race to the engine shed. Whoever wins this race is the fastest. Diesel revved his engine. Thomas pumped his pistons and the two engines raced quickly away, backwards. 
Thomas steamed into the lead. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, he huffed to himself. Thomas had to win this race, but Diesel rattled alongside him. Then there was trouble. Harry and Bert were enjoying a rest at the engine sheds, but Thomas and Diesel couldn't see them. They raced backwards towards Harry and Bert. With a crash and a bash, Thomas and Diesel smashed Harry and Bert right through the back of the engine sheds. Stones and timber flew everywhere. Bust my buffers! Oh no! Then, Henry arrived. I've come to collect my train. Your train isn't ready. Then the yard manager arrived. Thomas, you have pushed Mavis off the rails and Harry and Bert right through the back of the engine sheds. Thomas felt worse than ever. Oh no, it's all my fault. I should have done my job and not raced against Diesel. Come on, let's have one more race. No, Diesel, I have an important job to do. Thomas puffed over to Henry. I'll fill your trucks as fast as I can. Your train will soon be ready. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Thomas felt terrible. I must work very hard to put everything right, he thought to himself. Thomas shunted the trucks under the hopper. Soon they were all filled. And Henry hopped happily away with his train. Then Thomas collected Rocky. Rocky lowered Mavis back onto the tracks. I'm sorry I bashed you. I was trying to win a race. Mavis was relieved to be back on track. Next, Thomas shunted Rocky over to the sheds. Harry and Bert were soon back on the rails. I'm sorry I biffed you. I should have done my job instead of trying to be the fastest. Then, Diesel rolled in. We must clear all the trucks of broken stones. Yes, Thomas. At last, all the trucks were loaded with broken rubble from the sheds. So together, Thomas and Diesel shunted the trucks as quickly as they could. At last, all the jobs were done. We still don't know who's the fastest. Let's have another race. All right, but this time we must go forward. So the two engines raced away to the quarry gates. And they both arrived together. It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Tram trouble. Thomas the tank engine and Toby the steam tram are very good friends. Toby always tells Thomas when he's worried, and Thomas is always happy to help Toby. One bright morning, Thomas puffed into Arlesdale End. Hello, Toby. You look happy. The fat controller has asked me to lead the parade at the first Great Waterton Festival. Thomas was pleased for his friend. That's because you're the only steam tram on Sodor. Everyone will cheer for you. Thomas puffed quickly away. The fat controller was waiting for him at Great Waterton. He had three important jobs to do. Thomas raced into Great Waterton, fizzling fireboxes. Waiting on the rails was another steam tram. Thomas, this is Flora. She's the new steam tram on Sodor. 
Flora smiled her sunniest smile. Hello, Thomas. Ha, ha, hello. Flora is to lead the parade with Toby. Thomas gasped. Check Flora to meet Toby. Then Toby must bring Flora back here for the parade. Thomas was worried. Toby thinks he's leading the parade all by himself, thought Thomas. Now he will be very upset. I must keep Flora away from Toby until after the parade. Thomas and Flora arrived at the junction. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I will take Flora to do one of my jobs before we go to Arsdale End, he chuffed to himself. By then, Toby will have left to lead the parade. Let's go to the woodyard first. It won't take long. That sounds exciting. So they raced away to the woodyard. Thomas collected a flatbed of heavy logs. Now we can meet Toby. Flora was pleased. Hooray! She peeped prettily. They set off. Toby, Toby, you must go. Hurry now to lead the show. Thomas puffed to himself. Flora and Thomas waited at the junction to Toby's shed. It looked empty. Come on, Flora. Flora pumped her pistons perkily. Suddenly, Thomas saw steam coming from Toby's shed. Cinders and ashes, he thought. Toby's still there. Toby mustn't see Flora. Flora, I've just remembered. We must go to the quarry first. Flora was surprised. If you say so, Thomas. And they puffed away. At the shunting yard, Thomas was coupled up to the stone trucks. Now we can meet Toby. That made Flora very happy. Toby, Toby, please have gone. Lead the show, be proud and strong. Thomas puffed to himself. Thomas and Flora arrived at Arsdale End. This time, Thomas was sure Toby's shed was empty. Come on, Flora. Oh no, thought Thomas. Toby's still there. Toby mustn't see Flora. Flora, we're late to pick up my load. We must go to the docks. If you say so, Thomas. And they puffed quickly away. At the docks, Thomas was coupled up to his large load to take to Great Waterton. Thomas was sure Toby would now be leading the parade. Come on, Flora! Flora's axles ached, but Thomas steamed strongly. Thomas and Flora puffed up to the junction. Then there was trouble. Flora had chuffed too far. She had run out of coal. I'm sorry, Thomas. Flora's wheels wobbled weakly. Thomas felt bad. He knew it was his fault. Then he heard a chuff and a puff and a ring of a bell. It was Toby. Thomas, I've been waiting for you. Who, who's that? Cinders and ashes. Toby had met Flora. Neither of them was at the parade. The fat controller would be very cross. Thomas couldn't have felt worse. Flora, this is Toby. Toby, this is Flora. Toby looked very happy. Thomas was surprised. I wanted to tell you, Thomas, that I was too scared to lead the parade all by myself. But now, Flora and I can lead it together. I thought I knew what you wanted, Toby. But I was wrong. Now, Thomas had to quickly put right his mistake. Flora, take my coal. I'll pick up more. Puff as fast as you can to Great Waterton. 
Toby and Flora soon puffed away. Later, Thomas chuffed in to Great Waterton. The parade was ready to leave. Thomas's flatbed was uncovered. Flora gasped. She had a wonderful new tram car. Toby was pleased. Thomas watched his two friends lead the first Great Waterton Parade. The children cheered. The brass band booed. Now I have another best friend, and she's a steam tram too. And Thomas smiled his happy James works it out. James is a bright red engine. He always likes to look his best, to do his best, and to show other engines he knows best too. It was winter on the island of Sodor. Thomas, Stanley and James were working at the yards. They were shunting trains to take to Great Waterton. They had to arrive on time. Stanley watched James shunting his trucks. They wiggled and giggled. <laughs> James quickly biffed and bashed his trucks into line. You're the best biffer I've ever seen. Hey, that was nothing. See how easily I can shunt heavy Hector? James collected Hector. Stanley watched as James shunted Hector to the back of his train. Snow started to fall. I'm ready to leave. I'll see you both at Great Waterton. It's starting to snow, James. You should check the weather with the yard manager. James didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Thomas and Stanley. I'll decide what we do. The weather doesn't bother me. So James buffered up to his train and steamed slowly out of the yards. James puffed through the countryside. The snow was getting heavier. James stopped at a signal. Harold swooshed in. There's bad weather all over the island. It's very hard to see the tracks. Then we better go through Henry's tunnel. James sniffed. He didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Harold. I'll decide what we do. We'll take the track through Shen Valley. It's the quickest way. The signal changed and James puffed away, pushing his train. James arrived at the Shen Valley Junction. Now the snow was very thick. It made it hard for James to see ahead. James puffed on to the wrong track. James thought he was steaming through Shen Valley, but he wasn't. He was steaming towards the snowy hills. James saw Edward in a siding. He was wearing his snow plow. The ice has made the line ahead very slippery. It will be hard to shunt your train up the hill. James was surprised he was in the hills. I must have taken the wrong track, he thought. I've had to clear snow from lots of lines. James was worried. We need Edward's help. He could couple up to the front of the train. But James didn't want to be told what to do by a truck, especially in front of Edward. I'll decide what we do. I can manage on my own. So James puffed slowly towards the hill. James huffed and puffed. He steamed and strained. His face was now as red as his boiler. James arrived at the top of the hill. 
He was very pleased. Now I can put fast down the other side, he thought. Then there was trouble. Hector could see a snow slide had blocked the line. Hector knew that if James slowed down at the bottom, they would get stuck in the drift. Onwards, onwards, don't slow down! But James didn't want to be told what to do, especially by a truck. I'll decide what we do, he huffed to himself. So James applied his brakes. The train smashed straight into the snow. And it stuck. James couldn't make his delivery. He felt very bad. <laughs> James is silly, James is slow. James has got us stuck in snow. James wished he had checked with the yard manager about the weather. He wished he hadn't tried to find his way through Shen Valley. And he wished he had asked Edward to be his front engine. Now I know Hector was trying to help me. <laughs> the trucks giggled. Quiet! Please, Hector, how can I deliver my train on time? Hector was happy to help. I'm a very heavy truck. We must race down the hill at full speed. Then we will biff the train right through the snow. What a good idea! So Hector was uncoupled from the train. James wished and wheezed. At last, he had hauled Hector back to the top of the hill. Go, James, go! Hector and James raced faster and faster down the hill. There was a mighty biff, and Hector pushed the train right through the snow. We did it! Well done, Hector! Hector was pleased. Thomas and Stanley were already at Great Waterton. James, Hector and the train arrived. You made it. We were worried. I wasn't worried. Hector helped me all the way. Thomas and Stanley looked surprised. You can always rely on a good truck. Hector was happy to be a good truck. And James was happy to have a new friend. Duncan and the Hot Air Balloon. It was a beautiful day in the hills of Sodor. It was also the Thin Controller's twins' birthday. Every year, Duncan gave the twins a special birthday ride. Duncan was excited. At the depot, Duncan was getting ready. He had to look his best. His special birthday flag had been fixed to his cab. Duncan was very proud of his flag. Mr. Percival came to see Duncan. Shall I pick up the twins now? No, Duncan. This year I'm giving them a ride in a hot air balloon for their birthday. Duncan was disappointed. He wanted to give the twins their birthday treat. Duncan, you must collect a hot air balloon from the transfer yards. Yes, sir. And he chuffed sadly away. Duncan pulled into the transfer yards. Thomas had brought the balloon from the docks. The balloon man was filling it with hot air. Hello, Duncan. Hello, Thomas. That's a wonderful balloon. You be sure to puff slowly and carefully. So Duncan huffed slowly away to Mr. Percival's house. On his way, Duncan rolled over a bumpy track. His flatbed clanked, rattled and jiggled. One of the ropes holding down the balloon came undone. Oh dear, thought Duncan. The bumpy track has jiggled the balloon loose. What shall I do? Then an idea flew into Duncan's funnel. 
If I jiggle the balloon more, it might float away. Then I could give the twins a ride today, and they could have a balloon ride tomorrow. So Duncan began to jiggle backwards and forwards over the bumpy track. The ropes loosened, and the balloon floated away. Hooray! And Duncan chuffed cheerily to the thin controller's house. Duncan puffed round a bend. Then he stopped. The hot air balloon had floated down. It was right in front of him on the track. Duncan bumped into the balloon. Flatten my funnel. Now what should I do? The basket wobbled and one of the sandbags fell off. It made the balloon rise up a little. Duncan was puzzled. He biffed the balloon again. More sandbags fell off. The balloon rose higher and higher and floated away. Duncan was delighted. Duncan chuffed round another bend. Bus, my buffer. There, on the bridge above him, was the balloon. I thought the balloon had floated away. What shall I do now? He thought. Duncan chuffed his biggest puff. The hot smoke from his funnel flew into the balloon. It made the balloon get bigger. This gave Duncan an idea. He huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed. The balloon got bigger and bigger and floated away. Duncan was delighted. He raced to the thin controller's house. The thin controller was waiting for him. Where's the hot air balloon, Duncan? It came loose, sir, and floated away. The thin controller was upset. Then there was trouble. The balloon floated down from the sky once again, straight towards the weather vane on the thin controller's roof. It burst on the sharp point. The balloon tumbled down. Fizzling fireboxes. Duncan was upset. Now the twins wouldn't have their balloon ride at all. It's all my fault, sir. I just wanted to give the twins their birthday treat, just as I always have. The thin controller was cross. Duncan, you were going to give the twins their birthday ride. You were going to pick them up and bring them here. Duncan felt even more upset. He wanted the twins to have a happy day. Sir, Peter Sam could pick up the twins. Then I will go and collect the balloon repairman. I'm sure he could fix the balloon. The thin controller thought this was a very good idea. So Duncan puffed quickly away. Duncan raced into Mountain Village Station. The balloon repairman was waiting. We must be quick, sir. The balloon has to be fixed before the twins get home. Duncan chuffed quickly back to the Thin Controller's house. The Thin Controller was very pleased to see them. The balloon repairman looked at the hole in the balloon. Oh dear, it's a very big hole. I don't have enough material to fix it. I know, sir. My birthday flag, it might just be big enough. The balloon repairman looked at Duncan's flag. Well, yes, Duncan. That would be perfect. The balloon repairman fixed the balloon just in time. Peter Sam arrived with the twins. They were delighted. Soon, Mr Percival and the twins were floating high above the island of Sodor. And Duncan felt so happy he thought his boiler would burst.